you're about to see is Gary Bailey, Mr. Motocross himself. Gary. Motocross originated in Europe in about the early 40s and the late 50s and was brought to the United States in the late 60s and 70s. Uh, here we'll see some of the riders in competition today, some of the best riders in the world, and the best riders in the United States. Uh, many of these machines that we will be seeing, here we have the start of the first first race of the 250 support class. Many of the riders in this class, however, even though it may be called a support class, many of these riders are as good of riders as the riders that will be competing in the international competition. We'll be looking at many different styles of riding of the riders out here today. Uh, the riders now proceeding off the starting line, coming down in through the, uh, down the downhill and in through the uh, first corner. Uh, the first rider here, number 24, is Rich Eierstead, leading the pack down the hill. The downhill sections are, are, should be uh, uh, equally as fast as the uphill section. For those of you that don't understand motocross riding, uh, motocross riding is laid out on a hillside over natural terrain uh, with many jumps. Uh, it's very hard on the motorcycle, very hard on the suspension, uh, and the technique which is involved is, is very critical. Uh, the riders now, as we watch them coming out of the corners, uh, using a lot of body weight transfer coming out of the corners, proper power, uh, and so on to be able to get the motorcycle to uh, get around the racetrack quickly. Uh, down the downhill section, these riders are probably traveling uh, somewhere between uh, 70 and 75 mile an hour, which doesn't seem very fast to people that aren't associated much with motocross, but it would probably be equivalent to running about uh, 120 mile an hour uh, over the uh, uh, down a flat road. Uh, the jumping techniques which are involved, you'll see the riders coming over the jumps, uh, keeping the motorcycle very low to the ground. There are many different techniques of, of uh, jumping a motorcycle. However, the proper way is to get the motorcycle pushed out, get the motorcycle, keep it low to the ground, and uh, get it moving forward quickly. Uh, riders here in this particular race here, uh, now we have the uh, checkered flag, which uh, is something that many of the riders are very glad to see, particularly after running a 20 or 30 minute moto. Here in the pit area, we have riders getting ready for the next moto. This being the start of the first race of the 500cc, this class, this race will be running for 40 minutes plus two laps. This is 40 minutes over the roughest possible terrain that uh, you, can, you can imagine. Uh, motocross riding is uh, supposed to be the number two sport. It is the number two sport, physically demanding next to soccer. Soccer is the number one sport. The ground in which these riders travel over is tremendous. It's, uh, it's unbelievably rough, uh, and it's, it's quite unbelievable. It, it, you've never seen a motocross race. Uh, uh, this, is, this is an unbelievable thing. And riding it, there's no way to explain the things that you go through and how fast you have to be going. Again, we can watch some of the cornering techniques. You'll see cornering techniques now of some of the world champions and how they go around the corner in comparison to some of the others. Uh, we'll try and point out a few of the riders here uh, in this race right at this particular time. This is the first 40-minute moto, and we have uh, Roger DeCosta, three-time world champion, leading Adolf Weil of the Mako factory from West Germany. Uh, here we have a picture of Timmy Hart uh, on the Yamaha factory mono shop. Uh, Notice the jumping techniques as the riders go over. The moment that the motorcycle touches the ground, uh, they're under full power and charging the motorcycle forward all the time. Brad Lackey, their number one in the Kawasaki, uh, was the top American rider for this race. Uh, here we have a rider landing, getting a little bit sideways, almost unloading the importance of having the power back on the motorcycle very quickly and getting it down to the ground uh, and getting it moving. Uh, the impact is severe. You can break a motorcycle in two over these jumps if the suspension is not set up properly. Here, Roger and Costa are making a very good job of cornering. Notice the weight transfer and the, the technique of cornering, though, which is very important. You have to be able to get the motorcycle around the corner quickly in the shortest possible line without killing your speed at all going around the corner. Riders of this caliber don't hesitate to pass other riders. They come up on them very quickly and they, and they pass them equally as fast. This is the difference many times that you'll find between the professional rider and the amateur rider whenever they're going around. Uh, let's just take just a minute and watch some of these riders as they go around through the corners. Uh, you may notice as many of these riders go through, and particularly through the rough sections, it appears many times as though they're sitting on the seat. But these riders are not actually sitting on the seat. They're very close to it. And many times they are just barely touching the seat. You can't sit directly on the motorcycle because if you do, it'll have, the motorcycle will have a tendency to throw you around. The main idea is to keep the body under control even though the motorcycle does jump around a lot. 
Brad Lack you get on the Kawasaki. Uh, Sylvan Gabors from Belgium on the Suzuki. Roger DeCosta on the Suzuki, number six. Um, closely behind him is Adolph Will. Uh, oh, just Mark Blackwell. Again, Roger DeCosta in the corner. Cornering the weight transfer down the seat and leaning very far forward. Sylvan Gabors on, on the Suzuki. Notice that many times the riders are going through the rough stuff and they're standing up on the pegs. They're letting their arms and their legs work along with the suspension so that the body does not take any beating. Many of the times we try and use the grooves in the corner, which are called berms. Uh, these berms are dirt that's built up in the corners in order to be able to help the riders get around faster. At the end of the first motor, Roger DeCoster has come out on top with Adolph Wheel in second place. Here we'll get a good idea to be able to watch the riders coming over the jump, watching the jumping techniques. We'll see many different jumping techniques as these riders come over the top. Some of them pushing out, getting the motorcycle straight upright, outright, and getting it down to the ground very quickly. Other riders taking a lot of time and flying through the air. The main thing is that the power is full on whenever you hit the ground so that you can relieve the impact from the suspension. You have to be up off to the seat and working with the motorcycle all the time. These riders are the riders in the second race of the 250 support class. As the riders come over, quite different type of jump, a much faster jump coming over the riders.